So now that we've finally made a mature sperm cell through spermatogenesis, it's worth understanding what a mature sperm cell really is. What does it look like? So let's look at a sperm cell, and specifically a mature sperm cell. A mature sperm cell will have three major structures to remember. It will contain a head region, and this is also shown in figure 46.11. This head region will house the nucleus, and that's very important. Why is the nucleus important? Well, guess what? This is where half your genes come from. This is where half your genes are stored from your father, and thus this is going to be found at the head region of the sperm cell. But it will also contain a separate structure called the acrosome. Some just means a body, so that just means a structure here. And acro means at the tip, or the head. This is going to be a structure that is found on the surface um, of the sperm head. And it's going to be a very important structure because it's actually a membrane-bound vesicle that's a part of this living and successfully moving cell that's going to have enzymatic capabilities, enzymatic properties. In essence, it's going to release certain enzymes that are going to be involved in egg penetration. You have to remember that the ovum is actually a pretty well-fortified and guarded fortress that's covering all of these nutrients, that's covering all of these organelles, these mitochondria, this, uh, the other half of the DNA that becomes you, that becomes an organism. So it's important for this egg to be protected on the outside from many things that can be dangerous, let's say. But the sperm is not dangerous. The sperm needs to fertilize and meet with the other nuclei of this egg. In order for it to do that, it has to penetrate through the protective covering of the egg. And in order for it to do that, it has to release enzymes that are hydrolytic, that are going to break down and eat away at the outside. And then eventually the sperm will reach the egg and specifically the nucleus and combine the nuclei in a fertilization event of the two genes, of the two gene pools, let's say, of the mom and the dad, and thus you have fertilization. So the acrosome allows the sperm to penetrate the egg and get to the nucleus to have fertilization to occur. So that's our head region. Next would be the midpiece. The midpiece of a mature sperm cell contains lots of mitochondria. I've mentioned that sperm have these mitochondria structures. Why do they have mitochondria? Mitochondria produce ATP. They're really good at producing ATP, right? And why is ATP necessary? Well, ATP is energy, and energy is necessary because sperm are motile, and they need energy for their movement. Their flagella cannot move on its own. It needs energy, it needs fuel, and that fuel comes from the mitochondria. Where are the mitochondria located? On the midpiece of a mature sperm cell. And finally, how does this movement happen? It, of course, happens through a tail. And that's our final part of the sperm, mature sperm cell. And this is going to, of course, be where the flagellum is found. So the thing that makes a mature sperm cell mature is that it has a head, it has a midpiece, and it has a tail. The early parts of this spermatogenesis, the early uh, sort of events, do not have all of these things. If you look at the figure, figure 46.11, you'll see that it starts coming later and later and later until you finally get to the mature sperm cells. That's only when you see head, midpiece, and tail all together very nicely. Now, we've covered this in about 15 to 20 minutes. In reality, and the maturation of sperm, the spermatogenesis, actually takes about 65 to 95 days. This is a very long process. It's a long and continuous process that happens throughout the life of the male individual, and it just tells you how much the body devotes to this process, how much energy it devotes, how much time it devotes to a very important process of making sperm, and thus, hopefully, in in the event, uh, hope, in the hopeful event of a successful sexual reproduction. So it's very important to note that this is not just you know a magical process that happens over one or two minutes. Sixty-five. To 95 days for a fully mature sperm cell to go from its initial spermatogonium state all the way into the mature sperm cell state that we've highlighted here. And that covers spermatogenesis. We're going to be looking finally and concluding male reproductive male reproduction by looking at endocrinology associated with this. This all this doesn't just happen, it's actually guided by a bunch of hormone cascades, as we'll see in the next video.